you may begin. Okay. Good morning, class. It's uh, pretty cold outside, and I uh, <laughs> hope you guys are going to have a good day because I am still freezing. All right. I'm from Nevada, and it's really, really warm in Nevada, and I didn't acclimate yet. So uh, today we're going to we're going to talk about and discuss and let you guys uh, give you guys some information about. How does the Standing Rock Pipeline issue affect the tribal environment? So obviously we've all been uh, on the internet and we've seen the, the issue of the Standing Rock standoff over there, just not too far from here. And we actually have a, um, a fellow student that's from there, but she didn't really participate because she was too young. And, uh, but it's, it, was a, it was a pretty big issue, and um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, give you guys some uh, information about it, and hopefully we can figure out a couple of um, uh, solutions on how we can work on the tribal environment. But my name is Jermaine Bell, and I was chosen as our group leader. Uh, <laughs> Not, I didn't want to be the group leader, but obviously uh, I, was, I, I talk very good and sometimes uh, I end up putting my, myself into situations I don't want to be. But I'm going to introduce our group, uh, well I'm going to have our group introduce themselves and then we'll get into our topic. So first of all. My name is Rosio Chapman, um, I'm from the Santa Rocks and Tribe. I'm James Dufries, I'm from uh, Turtle Mountain. I'm Selena Devery, I'm from Colorado, Montana. And we're missing another classmate, so. Two of them. Yeah, two of them. And uh, so it's going to be kind of hard for us to kind of transition. Excuse us if yeah. it's a little off. Transition a little smooth. So we're going to we're gonna wing it here. So um, let's see. Question? Just tell us your question. No, your question. OK. So our, our question was, how could we solve the tribal issue of the Standing Rock pipeline? Or how could we help over there? And we try to come up with solutions. Um, obviously, all reservations have almost the same issue about water rights, about the land, and also um, with the US government putting pipelines and oil lines through their reservations in our sacred lands. And all of these things are important to us, uh, the water especially, and especially the land, because that's where we grow our food. I know some reservations, like the Pueblo Reservation, they, uh, down in um, Jemez, New Mexico, they grow their own food. Um, I know because my wife is uh, Jemez Pueblo, and they rely on their food source. And if their food source is poisoned by oil or any kind of uh, coal mine that, that ends up um, wanting to be on their land, then they lose all their food. And where I live, Nevada, they have what they call the water rights fight. It's a battle between reservations and cities and the county. And they're fighting for water because all our water is being transferred to California. And it's being taken because LA is running out of water, San Francisco, they're all running out of water. So water resources, it just it didn't happen just at, at the Standing Rock pipeline or the Standing Rock uh, issue. Because obviously we all know, if you read up on it, the pipeline went under the the Missouri River, and the Standing Rock uh, protesters were there to make sure that didn't go under there because it could break. It ended up happening anyway, and it broke. So um, we're here to we're here to do that and uh, to kind of help uh, give you guys an understanding of this Standing Rock issue. So first, we're going to have to start off with James, and. I'll just go ahead and let him kind of do his thing on his foot. 
Okay, uh, <clears throat> the Dakota Pipeline, the who, what, and the why of the Standing Rock protest, the author was the Guardian on November 3rd, 2016. The, this article is about the Dakota Sorry, if in our, in our group thing, um, I accidentally erased my summary, so it kind of messed up his, where his spot was at. <laughs> you can go into the edits, top of the page, right underneath the star, it says last edit, so you should be able to find even his deletion. That's what teachers do, they go into the edits to see who's been in there. Because yours is still there. We don't lose people even though they sometimes get deleted. Okay. Show goes on. Yeah. Yep, you sure? That's <clears throat> fine. That's why it's a group. Catch it? All right, sorry. No, don't worry about it. The Dakota Pipeline, the Dakota Access Pipeline, DAPL, is a $3.7 billion project that would transport oil from the Brecken oil field in North Dakota to Patco, uh, Illinois, near Chicago, which is a refinery, the pipeline would be 1,172 miles long. The local Sioux, local Standing Rock Sioux tribe and thousands of Native American supporters across North America set up camp on the Cannonball Reservation to try preventing and blocking the oil project. They protested against threats against the land and the water. The DAPL violated many federal laws and the tree, Indian treaties with the U.S. government. The first protest camp emerged in April once the protesters stood their ground. And after a while, our own uh, U.S. Army stood behind the Dakota Access Pipeline in completing their project. And uh, a lot of you probably already know that they were macing and uh, hurting the Native Americans that were trying to prevent it. And that's that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> it's super small. No, but we can put it up there. So just hang on. You're good. No, oh, I can't go that way. a <laughs> 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 All you have to do to open that up is click the link in the classroom, scroll down to your picture. Is that it? Yeah. Is that bigger than it was? Then, yeah. Yeah. So. All right. And if somebody else has another visual aid or video, um, but to have it on a group doc, everything comes up on the big board. So that's what we like when we go to school. All right. Continue. Thanks, James. Okay, uh, so to kind of piggyback off that, I'm going to go ahead and go to Rocio. So my article was the stand, stand Up for Standing Up 
by Rebecca Hartman in November of 2016. And my summary about it is I said that this article is about the Dakota Access Pipeline, the DAPL on the Saniac Sioux Reservation, which has been going on for a few years now. This pipeline has people protesting against it, like even things and visuals help protest to protect our water. Our land is sacred and our water is sacred to us. So like what happens if the pipeline breaks and the water will be affected by the pipeline. As of 2010, there have been over 3,300 pipeline breaks in the U.S. which released the oil into the water and surrounding lands. In 2013, a pipeline in North Dakota broke and spilled 840,000 gallons of oil into a wheat field. <clears throat> that there just shows that the Dapple pipeline um, can ruin the sea tribe's water. Losing the main source of potable water, water is life and we need it in order to survive. Like my question was like, are we taking these water for granted? And that's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> and then, um, as I wrote, um, yeah, water is water. Are we taking water for granted? Yes, we are. All over, all over Earth, actually. And uh, in mine, uh, I have uh, Winters versus the United States in 1908. The Supreme Court established legal basis for the Indian water rights, include uh, holding that by setting aside lands for Indian reservations, the federal government had reserved sufficient water to fill the purposes for which the reservation was created. Thus. Native Americans have established sovereign rights and legal channels to, to defend their needs, but this unfortunately doesn't always work. Um, that was written by uh, writer W. Miller, a freelance writer, um, and he wrote a review on the essays of John E. Thorson, Sarah Britton, and Bonnie G. Kobe on the topic of tribal water rights. And again, uh, we, we're talking about the issues of Standing Rock and probably all of our reservations and how we have water rights. Um, this case became the cornerstone and opened legal doors for tribal nations all over the United States to learn and fight for their, their own water rights. Um, we've seen throughout modern history that the United States government has made decisions that affected not only the, our environment, but also um, altered our traditional and economic values. So basically, you know, it. Uh, Without our water, we can't have ceremonies, we can't have um, powwows, we can't celebrate correctly because we don't have sufficient water. And then um, we need to stand up for our water rights. We all need to learn about our water rights in every reservation, not just standing rock, but if we can all learn about um, our water rights and land rights and environmental issues, if we can solve our issues over the standing rock, your own reservations, can also do that. But uh, I'm just going to end my summary with a quote from my, from my grandma. And uh, she said, uh, our people once took care of our land so well that no matter where we went, no matter what season it was, it was always beautiful. Aww. And uh, she, she lived way back when, when land was actually beautiful, even though she was on a reservation. Um, she lived through the Great Depression, and she once told me, she didn't know what the Great Depression was because she was already poor. So, and then, uh, so with that, we're just going to kind of transition transition over to the land issue. Um, my summary is about the Dakota Access Pipeline effects on the land. The Dakota Access Pipeline crosses properties in twelve different counties in the western and south central parts of the state. <clears throat> the Dakota Access Pipeline affects not only the farmers but it damages crops and makes the fields unusable, lowers property values. For example, in this article, the Schlucker, I don't know how to say this. How would you say this? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Close enough. The Schluckers had owned 2,500 acres in which the pipeline runs across 10 acres. The Dakota Access Pipeline connects to an oil hub which holds 82 tanks that deliver oil to the Midwest and Texas Gulf Coast. According to Genscape, an energy and commodity transparency company, 
since November. 3,600,000 barrels per day have been flowing through the DAPL. Farmland has been flooding every spring since the DAPL altered the creek bay, causing its supply to pump the storm of the river. All right, so we talked about our land, um, we talked about the water, and uh, so we're just going to kind of go through on what we talked about. Um, we all touched about the water rights, standing rock, pipeline, how it affects our, our, our land, and then the crops. Uh, again, uh, I kind of touched base a little bit about what, what it does to our crops. Selena kind of talked about our crops and the land. And uh, I think, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I hope so. <laughs> Am I doing that right? Right. Did you get definitions for the key words in your question? Yes. Okay. Could you give those to us? Okay. So your definition, you We'll just go ahead and go through our definitions. Mm -hmm. My my definition of my topic was the um, a lot of people are standing rocks stood their ground against um, the surrounding authorities to try to stop uh, the oil spill and uh, how they how they basically um, try to prevent. A pipeline from breaking. Mm. That's, okay. that's it. Hey, thanks. Did you do any dictionary definitions of the words as a group on the top? There? No. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Next. Okay. So finish up, and then we'll be question answer okay. from the audience. So I just kind of summarize what we talked about. Um, we talked about the water rights, um, the issues um, of the, what they had at Standing Rock and also how it affected the environment and how it's affecting the environment today. Uh, I did a little bit of research on it. Um, the, the pipeline is leaking, the actual pipeline they bought for it is leaking, and they're trying to fix it. So uh, a lot of people don't know that it's actually leaking into the water system, like, like how, how they didn't want it to. And um, they, uh, they're trying to get it stopped. But in all, as we know in history, the government won't take responsibility for their mistake. They won't say they're sorry. They won't say, oh, we, we should have listened to you guys. To do that, but you it. Yeah, whoops. Yeah, and it still happened. And in all, you know, in this, in, we know in history, as Native Americans, we always get put in the back of the bus like that. So. Any questions uh, for the group from the audience? What do you think of something? So did you guys um, find out how the um, pipeline got to be put down that there? Did you guys hear yes. the background on that? How it all began there? Yeah, so um, in my research, the, uh, the original pipeline was supposed to be on the outside of Bismarck here. And, um, they had a big town meeting. They had a huge town meeting, and uh, the company came out here. They said, "Well, we want to lay this pipeline over here, and it was supposed to reroute on the, I believe, on the east side." And then um, what happened was the town people came together. Everybody came over, and they said, "No, it's going to ruin our water supply. It's going to. It's going to. It, what happens if it breaks? Same thing that all the protesters were doing. Same thing. Same exact thing." So um, rerouted to. So damage the Native American body, yeah. not the non-Native American exactly. body. But that that also stemmed from you know, my husband was the, um, was on council down there, and then the, the chairman just passed four years ago. The those people were reaching out to the then chairman and um, the water people down there, and never got phone calls back. So that's how from not responding and attending this meeting. Well, that's all that pipeline got started. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it 
got rerouted over there, so so instead of ruining everybody's water over here, they wanted to do it and just do it on the reservation. And it was actually on private land down there, you know, a woman owned it, you know, but they still did it anyway. And I used to work for FIPO, uh, and it's a historical preservation office. Um, just when you're doing stuff like that, any kind of government it could be, it could be, you know, a phone company. They have to give you have to they have to get permission to go and do that. Yeah, permits have to be filed. And none of that was filed. None of it at all. They just went down there, started plowing the ground, and they messed up. Thousands. So, since they're doing that to those to the Native American tribes, are they um, compensating them? Are they doing anything about that? Are they paying the people? Are they paying the tribe? Are they paying anybody? Nope. No. <laughs> that's why. That's why we we say we defend our water rights and our land rights. Yeah, because it's one of the one of the main rights that all the tribes have to protect. Because yeah. with our tribe, you know, they're trying to. We have dams that we have created to preserve water for our people. And so they're trying to give it to the white people and our pe our people on our council, well, from what I know is our, count our council is supposed to, pr supposed to protect that for us because, you know, when there's no more water, we have something to go back on. But when they had the natural disasters down south in South America, um, I had heard that our chairman was trying to um, allow some of our water to get flown down there for them to have water, which was, not right because you know he's supposed to protect our water, but he. But then again, he's trying to help. But then it's like in the end, you know, where when it comes to us not having water, you know, how are we supposed to be protected? And it's kind of hard to, that you know they're not getting compensated or they're not for that for that leakage, you know, because they're responsible for it. And that's not they don't have money offered, but not the size of the not the same. You know, you're already yeah, you're yourself or not. I'll give you an example or a metaphor about what's happening on all reservations, including mine in Wyoming, uh, my wife's in Nevada, wherever you all guys are from. It's, we're all gonna, we all dealing with the same thing right now. If you deep, dig, dig deep down inside your own government, the metaphor is: imagine going to court against the government, each one of our tribes. Imagine we're we're a pile of ants. And the government is humans. Because that's how it is on our reservation too. Because we have a big old farm and we have like a bunch of stuff that's grown behind our mountain. And um, they didn't grow any of that for us because we had no water. Mm -hmm. But all the crops and everybody else that live on the other side, they they're still using water. But we have limited ours, so we didn't have like pumpkins for you know what we usually have in like potatoes and. We have different kinds of corn. We have Indian corn. We have regular corn, and if we didn't get anything because. We don't have any water to make us stop. Do we have any more questions about? I have one more. Yep. You guys know what that bridge is called on right now? Oh man, I didn't get that. that okay. Anybody know, you know what that bridge is? How about anybody in class? Anybody in class know what that bridge is called on? Mm -hmm. It's a called back. They need that water bridge. That's where they're doing all the main staining and stuff. Yeah. Yep. I drove by it a couple of times and I went out there to go have some dinner with a friend and it was pretty nice and it was pretty cool to actually see the whole campground area. That land is all on Army Corps of Engineers. Do you guys know like the political reaction from like politicians and stuff when this was going on? There was a lot of, there was a few um, famous actors that came down and tried to support. Um, I forgot, I forgot some of their names. Shia and Whitley. Yeah, yeah. Because I had played a Hulk. <laughs> Mark? Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo or something? Oh, Mark Waldo. From doing, From doing a presentation in Humanities, I kind of did it on um, one of the members of the Black Eyed Peas. He was down there too. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that yeah. He was a member of the Black Eyed Peas. He was down there and he helped. And then he was with another, I don't remember his name, but he was kind of famous too. It was well supported. It's just 
the government pushed everybody over. Well, was that the end of an election year as well? So because do you think if there was a different president at the time, they would have done it? No, I mean it, it would have happened Trump anyway. Had pushed it so hard for it to go so that they could. It would. I think it would have happened anyway um, because we knew that if uh, I think who was running against Trump that year, Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, she would have slowed it down, but it would have still went through because at the time of Obama was at the end of his term, uh -huh. and he wasn't doing anything. And if you guys remember, he was uh, just like a year before that, or a year. In 2014. He yeah, he was over at the powwow in Cannonball, uh -huh. supporting, he was yeah, there he dancing and everything. The Native law, that's what I was thinking, you know, if there was the government. Yeah, so, and, and he didn't do one thing, you know, <clears throat> to answer your question, the political thing was there, but it was because of politics it happened. And, um, and then now that it's still, are they saying anything about it? Yeah, no, and then no. Trump got in there, and he just made it where he, first thing he did, was, one of the first things he signed was to go and have the, the, the pipeline start going through there. That was one of the first acts he did when he got into office, the next day, and then he just, just took off in there. Hold on, I mean, it was already on the other side. Yeah. And it did leak already? Yep, it's leaking right now. So, I mean... Is that, is that like our water up here too? Nope, no, not here. Uh -huh. Just just south of where, you know, wherever the water is going. they could have rerouted it somewhere home. They just wanted to go through there. It's the fastest way, it's the more efficient way to save money. Mm -hmm. And that's what the government's all about, is making money first. That's a hard place to live. It is. It's, 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 very hard to, it's very hard to think about because we can all die. And the world's gonna go on, regardless. You know, it doesn't matter how we die. The government's still gonna make money off us, make money through our land. You guys, if, if most reservations where we Native Americans were put on that land because it was desolate, there was nothing well, they there. Thought it was, it, they thought it was. Yeah, and then as that's time evolved. And then now that they look at it, you know, they want those land. Yep, they want there. It's like that on my reservation. It's like probably it was like that over there in North Dakota. You can obviously see how much oil is being pulled out of North Dakota. I mean, these lands were desolate at the beginning. Now, time is, you know, on our side, and it, obviously it's on the United States government side as well. Okay, the group minus Jermaine. Any other final comments? Thank you. Anybody, any other, <laughs> you, you had a leader of the pack, but well done. <laughs>